first of all, the card that you have here is literally the magician. And um, this is somebody who conjures something out of nothing, conjuring things out of thin air. This is somebody who's uh, very gifted with creating things, manipulating energies. And um, I feel like, you know, manifesting, bringing something into existence that did not exist before. And so this is a card about mastery. It's somebody who has a lot of skills. And this is what I normally associate with like, a Gemini person. They have a lot of hobbies, a lot of skills, uh, the gift of the gab, being able to persuade other people to do, you know, their bidding. And especially um, being, uh, I feel like, you know, you're, you're verbose, but you're also very, very persuasive. And so there's a lot of skills, there's a lot of knowledge, and there's a lot of wisdom um, embedded in this card. And I feel like for many of you, there are a lot of talents that you possess and you're not really sure which direction to go when it comes to, you know, um, using your talents to make money or even using your talents to, um, it, it's sort of like having to choose between, you know, different talents or different skill sets or different interests and trying to make a career out of it. Or even like having so many things that you're interested in, you don't know what to tackle first. Or I also feel like, you know, having so many different jobs that you're interested in, that you're capable of doing, that you're qualified for, and you don't even know which one to apply for. So I feel like there are a lot of options here. There are a lot of choices. And you're grappling um, between the many choices that are at your disposal because they all seem really attractive choices, okay? So I feel like in a career type of a way, in a life path type of a way, you might have very, uh, a lot of options and you're not really sure um, which one to go forward with, okay? We have here as well the Three of Cups and the Three of Cups is all about options and choices. This is a very celebratory card, but in this deck, the way that it's sort of like spinning in circles, it's about indecisiveness. It's about wanting the option that stands out from the rest, wanting something like specific and wanting something that encapsulates all of these things that you're really interested in, wanting to find that one thing that meets all the criteria. And as a result of it, you're kind of like not really making a decision or you're kind of not choosing amongst all these options because you're waiting for something that will encapsulate or that will have all of these elements that you love before you can really commit to it, okay? So I feel like it is a, a situation where you're maintaining like neutrality, okay? It's like not making, not taking action, remaining very, very neutral, still assessing the situation and prolonging the decision-making process because you don't want to make the wrong move. You don't want to make the wrong choice. You feel like you want a sign, you want a signal, you want something to indicate to you there is a choice that is best out of those options. And just so that you're sure what you're getting yourself into is the best optimal outcome. Um, I feel for many of you, this is like work related. And I do feel like you're at a point where you're, you've mastered your craft. Okay. Some of you might have started a new job and you feel like, you know, I know what I'm doing now. I feel like I've already, um, met the threshold or you know have hit that limit and i'm not learning anymore i'm looking for a new opportunity i'm scanning the horizon for greener pastures i'm trying to see if there's a another option that is a better fit out there you might be you know looking at other opportunities creative ventures even for you to get yourself involved in some of you have already mastered the work that you're um you're in you might have been in it for quite some time and I feel like the routine, the, the monotony, the, um, it's, it's no longer exciting. It's no longer fun. You feel like you're just going around in circles and you're kind of spinning your wheels. And also, you know, it's like that cycle, it, the monotony, it's over and over and over again. It's very repetitive. And so you don't feel like it's challenging anymore. You don't feel that you're growing or learning as much anymore. And so you're thinking about other options that might be on the table for you, or you're even thinking of uh, looking for more opportunities that might be out there. With the Three of Cups, I normally think of this as options that are just kind of like given to you. 
Um, somebody might tell you, you know, here's an opportunity here, here's an organization I'm looking at, here's a think tank, here's a, um, uh, here's a, like a, a nonprofit organization or an NGO that I'm, I'm uh, exploring. So I feel like they're bringing you ideas and you're trying to figure out, and I feel like all of these ideas seem very attractive, seem very enticing, but so it's not like they're dull ideas or dull options. They're just very enticing and you don't know which one you want to settle with or you don't know which one you want to apply for or you might be applying for all of them and trying to figure out, you know, what's going to come in first. What's going to be the first place that picks me up? I also feel in some regards, this could be, you know, options when it comes to love and romantic relationships, having a lot of suitors, having um, a lot of people kind of like, I literally feel like wrapped around your fingers, okay? And I don't feel like this is uh, leading somebody on or being like, um, um, or, or, or being, I guess, deceitful uh, with people. I, I don't get that, not with this combination. But I just feel like these options are great and you're trying to figure out, you know, who's the most compatible or who's the most or, or who's the best option for me or, you know, who's like the most um, viable long term prospect. So you're looking for signs. You're looking for like signals to indicate to you who is going to be the best option or what is going to be the best option. What's going to stand out from the crowd and what's going to be the most viable um, person or job or thing or location or whatever it is. I feel like you're, you're, um, you're choosing from amongst a bunch of very good options. Okay. Which is a really good place to be because we want options and we want choices and we also want, you know, full access to information. So I feel like you're still in a situation where you're reassessing. And then I also feel for others of you, um, there's a lot of, um, it, especially if you're in publishing, okay, and I, I think I might have mentioned this last month, I can't remember, but if you're in publishing, if you're in um, any type of like um, situation where you're kind of marketing yourself, so like if you're a writer, if you're a singer, if you're a performer, and you kind of have to sell, I, I don't want to say sell yourself, that sounds terrible, but you have to promote yourself in some capacity, I feel like you've already got it, okay? And you have multiple people that might be vying for you to either sign on with them for a book deal, for example, sign on, on with them for like a specific art project, sign on with them for a performance, sign on with them for like a record deal, whatever it is, I do sense that you have the options at your disposal and I feel like you're mulling over this decision. And because decision making is coming out so early on in the spread, I would urge you to wait until the 15th of the month when we are completely out of the Mercury um, shadow period before you make any decisions that have long term ramifications. OK, so sit still, mull it over, uh, really assess and ruminate over these uh, choices that are kind of like at your feet before you decide what to go ahead with, okay? Because I feel like there might be more information that is revealed, okay? And I feel like whoever, if, if it's like a job or if it's like a, a love interest, I feel like there's an energy of somebody who's a little bit controlling they might want you to be at their beck and call, for example. They might want you to curb your creative um, flair to do things exactly the way that they want. And these things might not be revealed to you until, you know, uh, we until we progress through like that first week of um, March. And you might have a little bit more information about this person's uh, either their personality or their intentions or their affinity to be a little bit controlling. And so if they're showing that aspect of themselves, it might rule out or it might be like an indicator to you that this might not be a viable option for you, either in work, in somebody who's either, you know, you're working under, who's managing you, or even like a potential uh, relationship partner, okay? So these things are go going to start to 
show up and I feel like it's going to be very subtle. But if you have like a lot of good options to choose from, you want to choose from the best. So the qualities revealed about this person in particular might be a little bit unsavory and it will make you reassess your decision. Okay. Um, so leave those big decisions until after the 15th when we have Mercury going direct and we are out of that Mercury retrograde uh, shadow period for you to make these important decisions. All right. So I also feel here, um, I'm seeing two people and I feel like there is a either like a compromise or a conversation that has been had okay I feel like one person is spinning their wheels and the other person is trying to keep the relationship together that's what it feels like to me and uh, I want to talk about these two cards three of cups once again spinning your wheels and the chariot trying to find direction um so I feel like this is a relationship okay this is somebody that um you have a little bit of power struggle with, okay? And your energy here is the magician. This is someone who's like uh, very creative, okay? This is like the Gemini energy. It's someone who's very creative, who 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 takes life very lightly, okay? Um, and who, who they just want to have fun. They just want to have a good time, and they 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 go through life in a very lighthearted, in a very like flamboyant manner it's like the social butterfly and then we have the emperor and the emperor just feel the weight of this person it's all about duty and responsibility and it's all about you know control and it's it's, it's all about like everything is very very serious so i feel like opposing energies between you as the magician and whoever it is that you're dealing with as the emperor so this is someone who could you know in your eyes they could be a little bit of a debbie downer uh, they're too serious for their own good and they approach life in a very methodical, in a very serious way. And a lot of the times they don't really know how to lighten up. They don't really know how to take a joke. And I feel like it's hard for you to communicate with this person. You want to joke around, but they take offense to the things that, that might be said. And then at the same time, I feel like they're all like either very work, work, work oriented and there's nothing else in their life. Or they just really don't know how to have fun or whenever you're around them you just feel the weight of responsibility okay um, so there is a little bit of power struggle here and let me talk a little bit about that and I'll talk about the, the rest of the cards in a little bit so one person here feels like they're carrying the weight of the relationship they're trying to move the situation along and I feel like they understand that the two of you are very different, that it requires a lot of compromise, that it requires a lot of like um, give and take and, you know, working with each other as a unit. And then I feel like the other person, um, and I feel like it's more your energy. So they're all about responsibility and, you know, um, getting from point A to point B. They're very, very serious minded. And then I also feel like the, the seriousness is in everything that they do. It's not just in relationships. It's in life. It's in, in work. It's in their family life. It's in their interpersonal relationship. It's in the way they discipline their, their mind. And so this person is, is just very methodical. They're trying to find the fastest route from point A to point B. And I feel like, you know, you don't mind if your life path meanders. You don't mind taking detours. You don't mind taking unexpected pit stops. You don't mind to, you know, like it, it, it for you, it's not so much about the destination. It's more about the journey. And so the two of you philosophically are coming at life from like a different perspective. And as a result of it, it is very difficult to move together as a unit to like work together as a unit so once again I just feel like this person doesn't want to lose control okay and I feel like it has a lot it's, it's not like a personality flaw I think like it's more of a survival mechanism for them this is something they've had to do at a very young age and it was very survival oriented and as a result of that they take life very seriously you know, they mean what they say and they do what they, they, they promise. And so they're very stable. They're very trustworthy and, um, very reliant. 
And so they have some amazing, really good qualities about them. And then I feel like they expect you to be a certain way and you feel almost like you have to change yourself or you have to cater or, or you have to like be something that you're not in order to move this relationship along. I also feel like they're making, um, they're, they're expecting things from you or expecting you to be a certain way or expecting you to step up or expecting you to chip in or expecting you to move the relationship in a specific way or even expecting you to put in the work so that the two of you so that they feel like things are fair or so that they feel like the two of you are i guess like on the same boat or they feel like the two of you are um headed in the same direction so that's what i'm feeling here i feel like somebody is kind of like tightening the reins in your life and wanting you to either behave a specific way or wanting you to do what it what they expect from you or wanting to be you to behave in a way that they expect okay and i do sense that the weight of the responsibility um, that they're putting on you it can feel a little bit restrictive okay and so going back to that message or the image that i saw about you know a new path being created out of necessity, okay? I feel like it pertains to this situation here where one person is almost like a disciplinarian and the other person just wants to, just might want to rebel just for the sake of rebellion, okay? And so I feel like one person wants to live without responsibility and the other person is all about responsibility. And so the two people can't really see eye to eye, can't really work together as a unit, might have a lot of arguments and disagreements over these two, you know, philosophical ideals. And it's really hard to work as a unit when you don't really agree on these things. And then I feel like one person is resentful that the other person is like almost authoritative. And then the other person is kind of resentful that the other person is a little bit too frivolous, too carefree, too like um, um, possibly like prone to procrastination. Okay. And so what's happening here is I do see no matter what the two of you are going to be able, to, you're going to need to, but I feel like there's going to be some type of a, closing of the cycle of this perpetual you know the disciplinarian and the other person wanting to rebel okay so it, it's it's not so much a role reversal but i'm starting to see a situation where the two of you are coming around to one another and i feel like a lot of it has to do with external pressure in your environment so whatever is coming in there might be additional pressures put or imposed upon the both of you and you have to work together as a unit. It's, it's like out of necessity, you have to work together as a unit. You have to learn how to navigate each other's energy. And in the process of being forced or having, you know, imposed upon and you have to work together, you're starting to realize that, you know what, their sense of responsibility and their, um, their, 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 reliance is really I guess like their stability their reliance and the way in which they can be counted on I feel that you're starting to admire that quality and then at the same time they're looking at you and they're thinking your creativity your ability to you know be flexible and to be malle malleable and to kind of like roll with the punches and be spontaneous it's very admirable. So you're starting to see merits in one another. And as a result of it, out of that sense of necessity of having to work together, the two of you are able to overcome your differences in order to, you know, move along together without creating friction. Okay. So I feel for most of you, this is like a relationship where, you know, because of hardships, because of necessity, because of you, whatever is imposed upon the relationship from the external environment, it's like the pressure is on. Now we need to work together. Now we need to hash things out. Now we need to find solution. And as a result of it, that, 
you have to come together and you have to learn to to get along. And in the process of getting along, I feel like you're starting to realize that, you know, there's strength in numbers, there's safety in numbers as well. And that because the two of you are so different, that creatively solving problems together will lead you to a better optimal solution, okay? Hence that door, you know, um, pressure needs to be exerted on that gate in order to, for it to swing open and to create a new path for you. So I feel like you've reached some type of an epiphany, like an awakening, a reassessment or a realignment with another person. And it's helping the situation move along in a smoother way. All right. Um, so for some of you, I feel like this could be, you know, like, uh, at, in a work situation. And, you know, sometimes we meet somebody and for whatever reason, we feel like we don't really jive well with them. Just energetically, we just feel like we're out of sync with the other person. And then you might have somebody like that at your work environment. And I feel like this might be indicative of a work situation where you don't, you might not have gotten along, but out of necessity, you have to work together. And you realize that, you know, that person is actually pretty great. They're reliable. They're, uh, they're a man or a woman of their word. They, uh, they get down to business. They get things done. They're very proactive. They take charge. They have great leadership qualities. They're not a tyrant. And they're actually very um, reliable. And so I feel like these qualities, uh, you, you're starting to admire and, and see these really, really good qualities about the other person. 